That's what I hear all the time from people when they'll say things like, well, Brother Kurt, when I go into a town, they'll be all in the quote-unquote spiritual warfare, or what they think it is anyway. And they'll say, Brother Kurt, yeah, you know, you're spiritual. Okay, I, I think, where, where do you get that idea, you know? And they, well, you're, you're spiritual. Uh, can you tell us what the, the, the most powerful spirit over this city is? I said, oh, yeah. It's called the Holy Spirit. But see, that's not what they're looking for. They're looking for, we want to know if it's going to be, the, you know, Belial or, or Leviathan or which one is it and which spirit is over. No, the Holy Spirit. Amen. And he gets there when you get there. Why? He dwells in you. You're the temple of the living God. Amen? Amen. Amen. And people always, well, we, you know, we got we to gotta set the atmosphere. You know, we have a brass heavens and we got to pray to open the heavens. There's nowhere in the New Testament that says the heavens, it says the heavens opened and received Jesus. It never says it closed. Yes. And even if it did, it's not closed to you because you're a believer. Amen. Now, it may be closed to the heathen. I'm not even saying it is, right? Because if it was closed to the heathen, they couldn't even get saved, right? right? But if it's definitely not closed to you, you have to realize you are the conduit of heaven. Heaven gets to earth through you. Amen. And the person sitting next to you, maybe they're not even saved, but they can, re they can receive heaven through you. And that's what you have to get into you, that you realize where you are. Dr. Summerall, whenever he used to fly into a place, he, he, they would land, and it was his plane, so they would put down the, the ladder there, and he would walk down, and as soon as he, his foot stepped on that tarmac, he, the first thing he would say was, he would, everybody behind him, they're on the, the ladder, and he's, you know, he steps down and he stops. And everybody behind him is kind of like, whoa, you know, because he's right in front. And he just stops. And they're like, what is he doing? And he stops and says, devil, I'm here. <laughs> there you go. You plant your flag, right? What are you doing? You're invading. You're an invading army. You are an invading army. You're an occupying army. You're supposed to occupy till he comes. Amen. And not be occupied. Anybody can be occupied. You're supposed to occupy. That means you go in and take territory and you hold it as a conquering army for the king of kings. Amen? That's who you are. You have to remember, one of God's names is Lord of hosts, Lord of armies. Right? And let me tell you, his armies, when he's talking about angels, they're not naked little baby cupids. His armies are angels that are eight and ten foot tall. Amen? And one of them killed 188,000 people in one night. One, you know how fast that is? If you lined 188,000 people up, bent their heads back, and a person took a sword and just ran down the line, you couldn't kill 188,000 in one night. But an angel did it. And he had to go from tent to tent. They didn't even line up for him. <laughs> That's one angel. That's what you have. Do you get that? You have one angel, that, and yet everybody's worried, well, well, if I cast out a devil, is it going to jump on me? If you can cast it out, it don't want on you. It don't want nothing to do with you. Amen? Jesus said, nothing shall by any means harm you. He said, I give you authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the ability of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Isn't that right? Well, all we got to do is start believing that instead of believing everything hurts us. Everything's going to, well, you know, well, that food, that's bad for you. Then receive it with thanksgiving. Bless it. Go on. Amen. God, if God can fix your organ and your body or whatever it is, he can sure fix whatever's in that food. Right? And if it's poison, he can make it not poison. Well, if he can do that, he can, if it's preservatives, he can make it not. Amen. Whatever you're worried about, because whatever you're afraid of, that has control over you. Right? Now, there may be some things you don't want to eat, but you ought to be able to eat anything. Amen? Because there's some places you can... See, that's why sickness and disease can't be of God. He tells you to go into all the world. Well, I can't go because I can't get my medicine there. Well, then that would keep you from going. It can't be from God. <coughs> Isn't that the simplest thing? So all you have to realize is whatever the Bible says I can do, I can do it. Why? Because greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Whatever it comes up against me has to drop to its knees. Why? Because everything that has a name has to bow its knee to the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Come on. All right.